Hi Roadsters, it's Michelle on the Move. Sorry it's been so long since I brought you a video. I'm not gonna make any excuses as to why I haven't. Just know I'm in a happier place. I am back in Iowa where my travel nurse journey began. And today we're gonna talk about COVID-19. You're watching Michelle on the Move. Let me start by putting out a disclaimer. I am not a doctor, I'm a nurse. This is, these are just my opinions. These are the things that I've come across in working um, frontline with the virus, people who have the virus, uh, coworkers. These are just um, six elements of the COVID-19 that we're gonna talk about in this video. So everybody's scared we understand that we're scared too. So I wanted to make a video kind of giving you some guidelines and some information about COVID-19. How do you contract COVID-19? Um, started out by saying that it was airborne, it was contact. There's been so many different back and forth ways as to how you get this. First and foremost, it is captured through droplets. So you can get it <clears throat> through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. How that happens is with these guys. Be mindful of where these guys are, your hands. You touch something, put it on your face, it's gonna go in your face. So it is from contact to the virus to your face. So next thing that we we're gonna talk about is prevention. So number one tip in prevention is, I'm gonna say this real loud in all caps, do not touch your face, period. Be mindful of where your hands are at all times. I watched a video from a doctor who broke it down so simple. When you go into a store, put your hands in your pockets, leave them there so you don't, so you, so you don't touch anything. If you have to grab something, of course, don't put them back in your pockets. But if you're just there looking like, am I looking for alcohol? Am I looking for paper towels? Am I looking for toilet paper? Keep your hands in your pockets until you find it, what it is you're looking for. Um, that's the number one. I've seen a lot of people wear gloves. We're gonna talk about wearing gloves in a second, but first I wanna talk about the prevention stuff. So these are on the front lines of prevention. And I didn't bring any soap out, of course. But first and foremost, wash your hands. Wash your hands. 20 seconds. Um, if you have small children, ABC song. Um, you can also sing the happy birthday song, the whole song. Um, so that's an easy way to get your kids to wash their hands. I'm going to give you a little demonstration of a proper hand wash using these gloves because I feel like a lot of people think they're getting their hands clean and they're really not. So I'm gonna use this white lotion. So pretend this is soap on your hands, right? So you are dabbing your hands with soap. I'm gonna set that over there. So most people put the soap on their hands and they're washing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Most people don't even do it for 20 seconds, so I'm counting. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So if you look at my gloves, this part's not covered. This whole area is not covered. This whole area is not covered. In this pandemic, I've noticed a lot of people use this part, this part to touch your face if you have to, because they think that the fingers are dirty, your whole hands are dirty. So proper hand washing has to do, key, key thing, key element in hand washing is friction. You don't have to have a lot of lather, you have to have a lot of friction, and the 20 seconds is key. So you start rubbing your hands together under the water, one, two, three, four, five. Then you go to each back side. One, two, three, four, 
five. And you go to this side, one, two, three, four, five. So in this, we've forgotten our fingernails, which I cannot tell you how many things live underneath fingernails. So right now, another key, keep them short. Then you're gonna go to your fingernails and the palms of your hands. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So we've gotten most of our hands, right? Guess where we have forgotten? Thumbs. You're gonna get in there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Give it one last twist and voila. Your whole hands are covered. Here comes another point now that I have all these, the stuff on my gloves. So if you wear gloves in the store, that's fine. I get that you don't want to be touching stuff. My problem with gloves in a store, being a healthcare worker that amazes me is I see people grabbing items from the store, grabbing items from the store, and then they'll go and they'll get something out of their purse or get their kids or, or touch something, touch their face because they have gloves on and they think that their hands are clean. Your hands are not clean if you have touched things with gloves on them. So if you want to wear gloves in the store, that's fine. Don't touch anything else but items in the store. Don't touch your body, don't touch your purse. So what that means is when you get ready to check out, you need to remove those gloves. So I'm gonna show you a proper way to remove gloves. Because if you're touching a contaminated glove with your clean hand, you've just contaminated that clean hand under this glove. So what you're gonna do is grab it from underneath here. You're gonna pull it off and put it into this hand so that you have one glove in this hand. This finger, one finger, you're gonna put underneath your wrist, pull this off this way. Of course, that lotion won't shoot in your face. You have your dirty gloves here. This part is clean. Wrap it up, put it in your pocket, throw it in a trash can that's right next to you. Better yet, make it a point to find a trash can to throw it in. Please do not throw them on the ground because these are considered dirty. So that is my glove demonstration on how to take them off. I wouldn't recommend wearing them in the store. I would recommend you carry a small bottle of hand sanitizer in your pocket so that you can sanitize your hands if, when you feel that you need to. So we're talking about preventive measures. We talked about hand um, talked about hand washing and the importance of hand washing in a good hand wash. Um, we talked about gloves, how to take them off, and it's kind of out of sequence only because I had them on and I wanted to show you how to take them off. If you're in a position that you can't wash your hands, the next front line is hand sanitizer. And I know, just being a consumer there is no hand sanitizer. So if you didn't already have some in your car or at your house on a routine basis, you can't find it now. You can't buy it on Amazon. If you can find it in a store, you're very, very lucky, buy it. Um, <clears throat> I have seen a lot of videos on homemade hand sanitizers. One important thing about hand sanitizer that you already have at home, I have this small container because I ran out. Um, so on the labels of these uh, hand sanitizer bottles, however size they are, whatever brand they are, um, it lists the drug facts on here. And so you have to make sure that your alcohol content of your hand sanitizers is at least 70%. If you can find higher, buy higher. If it's not at least 70%, it's not doing you any good as far as cleaning, killing, sorry, as far as killing bacteria or viruses. So be sure that you're reading labels when you buy hand sanitizer. So what do you do if you can't find hand sanitizer? You make your own. <clears throat> so what I have done is I was lucky enough to find some alcohol. I had some lying around, um, this is another thing that's hard to find as well. So if you're lucky enough to find it, just make sure, like I said, that it's higher than 70%. This one happens to be 91, which is great. Uh, the higher, the better. <clears throat> so what I read was that if you buy aloe vera gel 
And this you can find in the section um, of the store that has sun care products like suntan lotion, sunburn products. Uh, they have pure aloe vera gel. Uh, if you have the plant at home, you can extract the aloe vera gel from your plants at home. Just put it in a measuring cup. So you can do that as well if you can't find it in the store. Um, this was kind of hard to come by too. So <clears throat> you're gonna do a two to one ratio. So for example, in this container, I put one cup of alcohol and I put a half a cup of aloe vera. Initially, it looks weird because it separates. Just give it a good shake and you'll get hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, the same with your hand washing. You wanna do the same motions. You wanna do the same inside your nails. Um, you wanna do your nails the same way and rub your thumbs. Give it that last quick. If it is not dry, it is not working. So you rub your hands together until it is dry. I see a lot of people doing this stuff. That doesn't work. Friction kills germs. So you rub your hands together the same way you would wash them until it's dry. So right now it's dry. So there is homemade hand sanitizer. You can't find it in the store. Put that aside. Second line of defense is disinfecting and cleaning your house. Lysol, bleach. If you can find these anywhere, I recommend you because there are none. There is no Lysol spray anywhere. So I just happen to have these in my car from where, I don't even know how long I've had these in my car just to clean my car, my steering wheel off and that kind of good stuff. So I happen to have these. So if you don't have these, get you some good old bleach. What you can do with bleach is get an empty bottle or buy a spray bottle. And this tells you the concentration on how to mix it according to what size bottle you get. I know it's like a one to eight ratio, one part bleach, eight parts water or something like that. It'll tell you on the bottle how to mix your bleach. Um, bleach will kill everything and so will the Lysol. So I recommend cleaning your house daily, every single day. Um, what you need to do and what a lot of people aren't realizing is what to clean off. So as a healthcare worker, I am taking off my clothes right when I walk in the door because I am in an RV right now. If I was in the luxury of my home, I would undress in my garage and leave everything there. So what they're saying to do is undress, leave your shoes outside, put your clothes directly in the washer and then go up into your house. What I do is I have a mat when I walk in, I immediately take my clothes off, I sit down, I remove my shoes and I bleach the bottoms of my shoes, turn them upside down on a trash bag that I have in the RV and I let them dry there. Um, that's what I do, wash my hands immediately when I get home. So most important thing that you're cleaning is doorknobs, light switches, the bottoms of your shoes, mop your floors, um, things that you wouldn't think about touching, wherever your hands go, sink handles, um, door handles, things like that, that you wouldn't think where your hands would be. Sorry about the noise, I'm outside. Might be a plane or two going by. So we're talking about disinfecting your home. One of the most important things is take your shoes off outside of your house. Don't go inside with your shoes on. If you can disrobe right when you get in the house, that's the best thing to do and put your clothes into the washer. So that would be my recommendation. If you can't do those things, I would say disrobe wherever you can. I live in an RV. So what I've been doing is as soon as I walk in, I take my shoes off, flip them upside down, and then I disrobe and put that into a trash bag. And so I keep my dirty clothes from work in a trash bag. That's what I've been doing. And then I clean the bottom of my shoes with some Clorox cleanup or some wipes. Um, as far as your home, you want to mop your home and clean your home every single day um, with bleach or Lysol. Wipe off door handles, light switches, all of the things that your hands touch on a daily basis. Toilet seats, handles on toilets, shower door knobs, anything that your hands touch, you want to clean with either Lysol or bleach. 
So there is also a shortage on Clorox cleanup pre-mixed bottles of stuff. So I think I went over that you can make your own just with a bottle of bleach and water. Um, some people put like a dash of soap in it. You don't really need to do that as long as it's just bleach and water um, to clean stuff with, countertops and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to talk about as far as prevention is when you have to leave your home. We are now what is called social distancing. What that means is you only leave your house if you have to for your necessities, gas, pharmacy, groceries. Um, have people been practicing that? Not really, but if you have to leave your home, these are some tips on what you need to do to stay safe. So if you are fortunate enough to have a normal hospital surgical mask that you bought at the store or wherever you got it from, wear this at all times. Um, I would say in your personal vehicle, you don't really need to wear it, but if you're going to get out of your car, you're going to wear it. So you start at your nose, pinch it just to keep it there. You're going to tie it on top like that, and then you're going to tie it at the bottom. So then you can pinch your nose for comfort. Most important thing, also another thing I've been seeing people do at the store is this is not going to protect you from getting COVID, right? This lets particles in, but doesn't let particles out. So if you think you've been exposed or you're just sick or you've been around people kind of suspicious, this will keep anybody else from getting it. So this is why they're saying to mask everywhere and because it has that 14 day um, inoculation period that you don't know you have it until you show symptoms, this kind of helps that part. So, and also teaches you not to touch your face because if you can see, I can't touch my nose or my mouth. A uh, big joke is when you're thirsty and you try to take a drink and you have this on when you're at work. But, so this teaches you, trains you not to touch your face. It doesn't teach you not to touch your eyes, but it does teach you to keep your hands off of your face when you're in public. So it's a good tool. It's a must tool to do whenever you leave your house. Um, important thing is when you take your mask off, you're going to want to clean it because you've been at the store and you've been either touching your face, adjusting it because it gets hot under there. You also want to adjust the inside because I've only had this on for a few minutes and the makeup I have is already on it. So take a wipe. One thing I forgot to mention, and let me just go back for a second. If you run out of wipes of any sort, you can get paper towels, cut the roll in half, tear them, put them in a Ziploc bag, and your bleach and water mixture, you can put inside that Ziploc bag, uh, wring out your paper towels, put them back in there, and you can use those for wipes to disinfect as well. You don't have to have the Clorox wipes that come in this little thing. If you have a container, keep it, surely, because you could put the, cut the paper towels to fit this length, and then you can use it just like you would these and put your solution in the bottom, shake it up, it soaks up in here. So I will be keeping this. So take one of these wipes, take it out. I'm sacrificing one of my Lysol wipes. You take one of your wipes, and simply just get your mask, wipe it off, wipe off both sides, tie it somewhere where it can dry. I tie it to my uh, rear view mirror. Um, the experts are saying that heat uh, kills the virus. So in my logic or common sense, I would say if it was in your car and it's hot inside your car, that anything on here, it should kill. Um, that's my logic. So that's what I've been doing. Is it right? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows, but that's what I've been doing. I clean it, then I hang it back up. So if you don't have a, a normal mask, because they're also out of the stores, um, if you are fortunate to get an N95 masks, these are like what we wear at the hospital. Um, this application is a little different from a surgical mask. Um, you put this mask on. Now it has two uh, rubber 
bands. And so you have one at the top and one at the bottom. So this one you would think would go down here. That's not correct. The bottom one goes on the top of your head. The top one goes on the bottom of your head. That gives you a tight, secure seal on both sides. This also has a metal piece that will make the mask more comfortable. This mask will protect you from getting COVID-19 because it has the filter in it that filters out that particle. If you want to be double cautious, which I've seen people do, you can wear this one and then you can also wear this one on top of it for double protection. I've seen people do that too. So this is the N95 mask. This is just a normal surgical mask. If for some reason, whew, I have to do that for 12 hours. Um, if for some reason you don't have either of these two masks, there is a really cool trick, let me move this, that I saw on YouTube on how to make just a normal mask um, out of a bandana. Um, I don't have a bandana, I have a surgical towel. So I'm going to fold it in the, in the size that it would be for a normal bandana. So what you're going to do is fold it in thirds. So you're going to fold this part towards you, flatten that out. You're going to fold this part towards you, flatten that out. You're going to take two ponytail holders. You're going to put one on this side. And then you're going to put this one on this side. You put them to where it looks kind of like a piece of candy, kind of like that, okay? So then you're going to fold one side in, and then this side, you're going to take it just like this. See that little pocket? You're going to shove this in there. So this is kind of what the inside looks like. Now. Before I show you what it looks like, I've seen a lot of people put coffee filters, double coffee filters. I've seen people put panty liners in there for filters. Um, you can actually, um, there are filters that you can purchase, medical filters that you can purchase to put in there. I don't know if they're available, but if you can't find anything, this will at least protect you from touching your face, okay? It may not protect you from anything else but that. But this is what, let me tuck that in there a little bit better. So this is what it looks like. So you put it on, you get one ponytail holder, you put it behind your ear, and you get the other ponytail holder, put it behind your ear, and then you just pull for comfort. So this is your homemade mask. You can use a bandana, you can use a, ba a dish towel, thin dish towel, whatever you have at home, washcloth, uh, pillowcase. I've seen people cut up some pillowcases, just layer it a little bit. If it's too thick, your rubber bands <laughs> won't go across your ears. So you want to put this over your ears. And then just pull it up and down for comfort. This will keep you from touching your face and all the good stuff that the regular mask can do. And if you put filters in it and that kind of thing, it will protect particles as well. So this is a simple home mask that anybody can do. So everybody has ponytail holders laying around, old pillowcase, whatever it is that you have laying around. So those are some masks and ways to protect yourself. I'm going to cover my ears, this is chilly. I'm going to go over um, how to properly put on and take off gloves. Putting on, not so big of a deal, but I'm gonna go over taking them off. These still have lotion on them, but you get the idea. So you have your gloves on and you're at the store and you're doing all your things, right? You're touching all the groceries and stuff. My suggestion, if you're going to wear gloves at the store, don't take your purse into the store. You don't need your purse. You don't need your wallet. Take your ID and your debit card, stick them in your back pocket. 
Um, if you have to have, carry your phone with you, put it also in your back pocket. Um, try not to touch it um, if, as much as you can. I wouldn't say don't take it because if you need it in an emergency, I mean, you have it. Just try not to touch it while you're in the store. So you have your gloves on, you're getting your items, you're getting your groceries. The important thing about wearing a mask with that is if you do touch your face, at least you have that mask on and you're not touching your face. Um, and the important thing about cleaning that mask is that if you have touched it, you've cleaned it. I literally was in the grocery store and saw a man eating a bag of Cheetos with his gloves on from after being in the store, which blew my mind. I would say once you have put your groceries on the line, did all your things, take your gloves off before you pay. And this is how you're going to do it. Dirty hand. Okay, your gloves are on. You're going to pinch your bottom of your glove and you're going to slide it off. You're gonna wrap it up, close your hand so that it's inside your hand. Clean hand. You're going to slide your finger underneath, pull it up, trash, throw it away. So when you go to pay, you take your debit card out, stick it in. This is clean. If you haven't thrown it away yet, it's clean. Put your debit card in. You can put one finger, put your debit number in, you're done. Throw it away. That is how you properly take off gloves. Don't touch them like this and take them off. Then your hands are dirty. It defeats the whole purpose of you wearing the gloves. In the so how to treat it. Right now there is no medication to treat COVID-19. They're working on it. There is no medication to treat it. There has been some speculation about, and I wrote it down so that I say it right, hydroxychloroquine and azithromax, which azithromax is an antibiotic. I don't really know what the other one is um, used to treat, but they're saying that those two drugs in combination with each other are um, decreasing symptoms and decreasing the length of time that it has. But that is just a very, very, very early study. What we do know is that this disease targets certain people. It targets the elderly, the immunosuppressed, people that already have comorbidities, which in layman's terms means you have other diseases like hypertension, diabetes, asthma, any sickle cell, cystic fibrosis, anything that you take medication for, it targets those and also children. Um, I'm an OB nurse. In the beginning of this whole situation, there it was said that it does not cross, cross the maternal infant barrier. And now they're saying that it, it now does. So um, that's a big concern for me. Um, one way you can protect yourself, anybody, even me, uh, my fiance has asthma. So I have put him on a strict regime of this combination. So uh, they have the emergency. This was actually hard to, is hard to find now too. You don't have to buy emergency, right? Um, you can go to the store and buy vitamin C. Just make sure that the amount of vitamin C that you're taking every day is a thousand milligrams. So however you can find it, just make sure that the milligrams add up to a thousand milligrams a day. Um, if you get this, it's a packet. Um, I would suggest you put it in about this much of water and chug it like a shot. It doesn't taste very good, but it works. Um, if you can find it in pill form, take it in pill form. So this in combination with zinc. They're saying that zinc is also very good for COVID-19. They're saying that it, it's helped binding with the other trial medications and it's helping them work better. It also binds to the vitamin C and it helps your immunity. So the combination of the vitamin C with the zinc is what we've been doing. Um, we also found at Walmart yesterday, this is called Ester C. Renee does not like the way the packet tastes in the water. So this, it comes in an orange box. I threw it away already, but it comes in an orange box. It was seven, between five and $7. I don't remember. There's 120 capsules in here. 
and it has a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and it also has calcium. So if you want to take a pill form um, that has enough calcium in it, that's just one pill along with the zinc, you can do that too. And also drink plenty, plenty, plenty of water. Water, 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 all day, water. That helps build up your immune system, keeps you hydrated, um, especially in these times that we're eating foods that we really don't normally eat, um, stay hydrated. So another big hot topic is, do I get tested or do I not get tested? This is a hot topic amongst the medical profession because um, in my opinion, I was saying no, 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 because if you don't have symptoms, that's wasting a test for somebody who does have the symptoms that may need the test. Uh, recently, yesterday, I read that if you are in a part of the country that has ample testing sites and you want to get tested, they're saying you can go and get tested if you have symptoms. Now, symptoms, what are the symptoms? Shortness of breath, elevated temperature above 100.4, uh, cough, runny nose, those kinds of things. Some people have mild cases, some people have more severe cases. Um, I would say what would make me go get tested is if I had shortness of breath that was for no other reason, I just got it. Uh, that would make me go and get tested right away. So in my opinion, if you're showing signs of shortness of breath, please go get tested. Um, practice social distancing also limit your people to whoever you started this lockdown with, stay with those people. Um, you shouldn't be going and visiting family members. You shouldn't be going really anywhere unless you need groceries or gas or work and home uh, during this situation. Those are the things that you should be doing. So the next question that a lot of people have is when do you go to the hospital? Same smart doctor that told me about one of these things that I, uh, the hand washing thing also said, uh, a lot of people are confusing the COVID-19 symptoms with just a common cold or common flu that was really bad this past uh, Christmas, January season, when kind of all of the COVID stuff started. It's hard to distinguish, do I just have a cold? Is the flu season should be over, but the symptoms are the same. What he recommended in his video broke it down very easy. What he recommended is if you have the sniffles or you're just feeling fatigued or tired, rest. Isolate yourself and rest. If that goes away, then you know it was just probably a common cold or allergies, those kinds of things. If you have those things with the added shortness of breath, that is what he stressed the most in that video. And I think that that's my opinion as well. Anytime you have any shortness of breath at this time, at, during this pandemic, I would go to the ER. Another nurse advice, do not go to the emergency room unless you have a true emergency. Not because you have a headache, not because you have a runny nose, not because you stubbed your toe. Those things can wait. The ER is full of people infected with COVID-19. You would do yourself more harm by going to the ER than toughening it out, calling your doctor's office. Call them, ask them what to do. They'll recommend things that you can do. They're doing tele-doctor calls. They're doing tele-visits. They're doing Zoom meeting visits. They're doing a lot of different things now that they can give you advice on what to do at home rather than you going into the ER for non-emergent situations. So my recommendation would be to only go to the hospital if it's a true emergency and shortness of breath. We talked about who this uh, virus targets already. We talked about the elderly, infants, children, people that have disease processes. How we can help those people is by staying home, staying isolated, staying away from people, I know it's hard and I know it's difficult, but during this time, it is shortening the amount of COVID that is passing in the United States. You can tell in certain areas where people are not practicing social distancing and where they are. 
the number the cases are significantly higher in those that are not practicing social distancing so if anything else just stay home so that was my little information regarding COVID-19. Sorry I haven't seen you guys in a while. I promise you I am going to upload more videos uh, now that the weather is nicer and um, keep you all more informed while I'm here in Iowa. Um, I appreciate you watching my channel. If you have not subscribed already, pause this video, go subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so that you're alerted every time I post a video give me a like, it helps me out a lot, and leave me a comment as to what other information that you want to know about or if this video was helpful at all. If any of these helped just one person change their ways or save one person's life, then I've done my job. And we're all in this together. So stay positive, stay strong, and I will see you on the move.